Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder and thank you for joining me today. We're going to take a look at the Pink Floyd box set Dark Side of the Moon, the Immersion Edition. This came out in 2011 along with a whole remaster series campaign. There were three of these box sets that came out at the time, one for The Wall and also one for Wish You Were Here, but today we're going to talk about Dark Side of the Moon. Before we get into that, I want to just give a little bit of background on the band for those of you that are new to this. So, uh, Pink Floyd formed in 65, originally with Sid Barrett as the lead vocalist and guitarist, and then David Gilmour joined as second guitarist and vocalist in December of 1967. So they only overlapped for a short period of time before David Gilmour actually took over and became the full-time vocalist and guitarist, and of course is the one here on Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, Dark Side of the Moon came out in 1973 and is actually their eighth studio album. A lot of people don't know that, or I should say casual fans don't know that. You know, they often think this is, you know, where it all came from. But uh, Sid Barrett did record um, Piper at the Gates of Dawn in 67 and then David Gilmore uh, coming into the band and, and doing uh, Saucer Full of Secrets. And they do, a, a you know, on those seven albums that came before this, they explore and develop as who they're going to be in that ultimate sound that became so synonymous with them here on Dark Side of the Moon in 73. Um, this is a concept album or you know and um, as they do with uh, some of their other albums and explored things like conflict and greed, time, death, and mental illness and you know the sound of this album and, and what they eventually became known for um, is due in big part, I think, to the engineer Alan Parsons. And if you've ever listened to the Alan Parsons Project, a lot of people listen to that and say, oh, there's a lot of tinges of Pink Floyd in it, but that's because Alan Parsons was uh, the engineer for this album here and actually developed a lot of those things that Pink Floyd would later use going forward on their albums. Uh, the art on the original album was done by Hypnosis um, with uh, Storm Thurgerson and Aubrey Powell. And uh, those two guys continue, well, Storm has passed away, but Aubrey Powell continues to work with them today. And then ultimately this album in the U.S. alone did 15 times platinum and of course many, many more the world over. So it's a huge album, spent over 750 plus weeks on the Billboard chart. It's the longest running album on the Billboard chart. So this is a huge album, not only just for Floyd, but albums in general. It's a very major, big album. And so doing it as the immersion box set uh, certainly makes sense um, you know it's got a lot of uh, publicity and, and you know some information done around it because of that so we're gonna take a look at that today all right so let's uh, quickly take a look uh, you know this is the outside this was new artwork done by the the firm hypnosis at the time for this it is a lift top box that's the spine there and it's a hard cardboard box uh, thing and the top just lifts right off so we're just going to pull this uh, right off the top like that. It does have this egg crate on top to protect it, but we're going to put that aside. And then this is what you see after you lift that off. And we're going to go through what these goodies are that are inside here. So the first thing we're going to take a quick look at here are these um, uh, coasters with, um, you know, album art or potential album art that they explored for this on here that uh, didn't necessarily get used. And then on the back side actually spells out Pink Floyd. And coasters like these are each unique to the box set. So this had artwork from Dark Side. Um, the other box sets had the artwork for The Wall or Wish You Were Here. Um, one of the things I thought was a little odd but cool nonetheless was that uh, these box sets came with marbles. Three marbles. This one has the artwork. A little hard to see, but uh, it's got the uh, uh, prism uh, on it and they, there's three of them they come in this fabric bag here one of the other things that it came with again that you know a little odd not sure what this has to do with uh, Floyd but a silk scarf uh, of course it's got the artwork on it maybe just simply because the scarf is a long length of fabric and they could do this repetitious heartbeat style pattern on it was why they chose that but uh, there you go you get a scarf with it along with those marbles um, there is a credits book which goes into, you know, just the background and who plays on what and recorded when and that sort of stuff uh, that does come with it. But then you get into the, the sort of memorabilia stuff and you get these uh, series of, of envelopes which has stuff in it and we'll go into those now. So the first one I'm going to show you 
has a tour ticket and backstage pass inside of it. And the backstage pass is cool because it's actually on uh, printed on fabric like a real backstage pass. It's not just uh, paper. The next one has these sort of, uh, you know, almost Pink Floyd trading cards, if you will. There's uh, four of these in here, um, you know, but then, uh, you know, on the back side, it's got information like a trading card would on it. So, again, you know, something uh, unique and uh, pretty cool there. Um, you know, the Pink Floyd, no shortage on ever putting together good content with the memorabilia and the stuff like those marbles or, um, you know, the scarf. Okay, the next thing that's in here is pretty cool. It's a little hand write-up about how they came up with the, uh, the talking conversations that you hear in the background on this album. And it was about um, how they did it. It's not actually like just recorded conversation from the public or something. Uh, they invited individual people in and asked them a series of like 10 questions, had them answer them, um, and then cut all that up, pieced it all together, and created all that talking that you hear in the background on it. But interesting to get that, that it wasn't just, you know, some sample from somewhere else, but actually something that they constructed and the questions that were asked, you know, are you afraid of dying and things like that were specific to the content and concept of this album. So uh, pretty cool there. You do get this uh, cool Lichtenstein art print. He's a famous artist, uh, reinterpretation of the classic uh, album art uh, that we know as the prism for this, one of the most famous iconic pieces of art on, on all of these, um, or all albums, I would say. And then you get two books. So here's the first one here, and it's really just a, um, a lyric book, but uh, it's got cool artwork that goes along with these uh, lyrics, and it shows, uh, you know, different uh, uh, developments of the um, famous art that we know as over the day, and reinterpretations of it. There's that Lichtenstein that I just showed you that you get a print of. There's some other cool things, you know, f from the content and so forth. And then there you go, right? So a lot of cool album-related art stuff there. And then you get uh, this cool uh, album art of uh, the band touring. And so cool photos like so. Do one more of these here just to get an idea and there's the back side of that All right and then we get to the actual content this is the uh, the ribbon that helps everything lift out but um, there are two standalone cardboard cased discs and then you get the rest of them they're actually attached to the back side of this not sure why all aren't were, or weren't attached and or all weren't in the cardboard cases, but it is how they chose to do this. Um, this one here is actually just the Blu-ray of it, Blu-ray audio and visual content. Um, but this one here, and I like that it's got the alternate uh, album artwork on it, is, is my favorite of the discs and the one that has the most uh, unique content on it. It is disc six and it was all previously unreleased. Um, it has the Dark Side of the Moon early mix from 1972, so you could hear the early developments of that with not quite all of the um, workings on it, including hearing Great Gig in the Sky without the uh, famous, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, choir vocals on it. Um, so that, that is cool to hear. And then you've got uh, the extra audio content on here. Track number 10 is called The Hard Way, and it's from the Household Objects album. And if you're not familiar with that, it's an unreleased album that they explored when they were looking to do something that was uh, completely different and not uh, the typical norm to follow up this album here. And they explored making an entire album using only household objects. So no bass, drums, guitar, that kind of stuff. And uh, this is one of the tracks here, and, and another one is called The Wine Glasses, which appeared on the Wish You Were Here Immersion box set. Um, and that one, of course, is famous for having opened um, the uh, Shine On You Crazy Diamond um, track. You'll hear a bit of that one on there. So that piece did later get used, but this one here, The Hard Way Not. So they only did two tracks before giving it up, 
one of them here, one of them there. For me alone, hearing those two tracks was uh, worth it in and of itself just for these box sets. But there's some cool other stuff. Track 11 is an Us and Them Richard Wright demo. Really great to hear that, but again, before it got all embellished. The next two on here are really cool because they're tracks that were intended for the Dark Side album but didn't make it due to time constraints. There's one called the Travel Sequence. And when they were uh, testing this album and exploring it, doing it live before they actually recorded it, these were in the set. So in June 1972, there's a live recording and uh, that song is part of it. And the next track, uh, the Mortality Sequence, was another one and that's also a June 1972 live recording. Then you get Any Color You Like, which is also from that same show, June 1972. And then you get tr the Travel Sequence, but this one is the studio recording. So that one got as far as recording a studio version, but again, it didn't make it onto the album due to time constraints. Um, and then for the final track, number 16, Money, a Roger Waters demo. Uh, so getting those um, on here, and again, hearing any extra Floyd like that, unreleased Floyd, for me is always really worth it. But let's talk about what's um, on the whole of this thing. And so uh, this is uh, what came on the backside that explains the whole thing, and we'll go into that. Uh, so you do get the, the full album remastered in 2011. Then CD number two is Dark Side of the Moon, live at Wembley, 1974. And then you get uh, disc three as a DVD audio of the, uh, the album itself. Then you get uh, disc four as a DVD video. And it's got, uh, careful with that, Axe Eugene live from 72, setting the controls for the heart of the sun. Live in 72, a Dark Side of the Moon 2003 documentary, that's 25 minutes long. Concert screen films, that's 59 minutes long. And then you get uh, stuff from the British tour in 74, French tour 74, and North American tour 75. So a lot of great DVD content there. Disc five is a uh, Blu-ray disc, and that was uh, this one that was in the cardboard case that I showed you. And then you get disc six, the one we just went through, which is this one here. And it's got the uh, early mix of the album from 72, and then those uh, bonus unreleased tracks. All right, so there you go. That's what this uh, content of this box set, really interesting unreleased material, plus the memorabilia and stuff like that. And, um, you know, certainly worth checking out these box sets. I'm not sure what they went for at the time, but this one I picked up recently for about 150 on Amazon, and you can actually still get all three of them. I think they've come down a little bit. If you uh, get one of the uh, ones from maybe the marketplace or a secondhand used version of it or something like that, they've come down. But uh, all three box sets are still available, and I highly recommend checking them out if you're a hardcore uh, Pink Floyd fan like I am. And uh, overall, I hope you learned something today, and I hope this was uh, fascinating to you. And if so, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. And I uh, hope everyone has a great day, and I'll be talking to you real soon. Take care.